Hi, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF, your ham radio sensei. Onegaishimasu. The ARRL field day event is rapidly approaching, so what better time to talk about solar power? Setting up a simple solar power station is very straightforward. You need three things. First, you'll need a solar panel. Second, you'll need a battery. And third, you'll need a solar charge controller. These days, many people are using lithium iron phosphate batteries. They have a long lifespan, they require no maintenance, they're extremely safe, very lightweight, and they have excellent charge and discharge efficiencies. BioNO makes a great selection of lithium iron phosphate batteries in all different shapes, sizes, weights, and capacities. In this video, I'll be using the BLF1212A 12 amp hour battery and the BLF12045W 4.5 amp hour battery, both from BioNO. If you're going to be powering your station on solar power for your entire field day event, you'll need much larger batteries than these, of course, but these are fine for QRP operation for several hours depending on how much you transmit and the current drawer of your radio. Solar panels also come in many different sizes and types. I'll be demonstrating using a simple two panel, 60 watt foldable panel from BioNO, the BSP60 Lite. This panel is capable of outputting 18 volts and 3.33 amps, which is 60 watts. This panel is foldable, but not flexible. The flexible panels from other manufacturers are an excellent choice too. They're lighter and they roll up, but they're also slightly less efficient. If you're going camping or hiking, the foldable panels might be preferred, but if you're going to be driving to your operating location or where weight is not a major concern, one of these foldable panels might be a good choice. A solar charge controller is a device which keeps the solar panel from overcharging the battery. It does this by regulating the voltage and current coming from the solar panel to the battery. It also stops voltage and current from flowing back from the battery to the solar panel. Solar charge controllers are made to support different battery chemistries such as sealed lead acid, AGM, and of course lithium ion phosphate batteries. It's important that your solar charge controller support the battery chemistry of the battery you'll be using. The BioNO SC5830JUD that I'm using supports all three types of battery chemistry. Speaking of multi-format, that is multi-chemistry controllers, the SC5830JUD solar controller needs to be set up for lithium ion phosphate batteries. The procedure for doing this is, strangely, not in the manual. Also not mentioned in the manual is the importance of doing this. It's a very easy process which involves going to the menu and selecting the right option. You can read the entire process by pausing the video now, or you can read about it in the video description. Setting up your solar powered station is extremely easy. There are three connection sockets on the front of the controller. The left one is where you connect the solar panel. That's a straightforward plus to plus, negative to negative connection. I got the PAPP45SB50 adapter cable which converts the 50 amp Anderson power pole down to a more normal size Anderson power pole and made myself a short pigtail with a matching Anderson power pole on one end. You screw the bare wire ends of your pigtail into the connector, simple. The middle connector is where you plug in your battery. The controller comes with DC barrel pigtails for bio and batteries, which again makes this really easy. Positive to positive, negative to negative and tighten it up. The rightmost third connector is only used for special purposes. If your installation requires that the attached battery needs to be discharged to a certain voltage, maybe you'd connect the discharging circuit to the load connector here. For regular lithium iron phosphate batteries, there's no need to connect anything to this connector. Now we're ready to hook everything up. Connect the battery to the charge controller first. Make sure that the battery chemistry is properly set for the type of battery you're using and follow the instructions I gave earlier to set the charge controller to lithium iron phosphate. Once connected to the battery, you'll see the display come alive. The initial display shows the current voltage of the battery, how full the battery is, and whether the solar charge controller is actively charging the battery. It will also show if there's any power being delivered to the load. 
The solid black arrows seen here indicate that there is no power being delivered to the battery or the load. At this point in time, you can step through each of the screens by pressing the left menu button. In order, these screens are temperature of the controller, charge current delivered to the battery, charge current going to the load connector, number of ampere hours sent to the battery, number of ampere hours sent to the load, the configuration of the controller, the system voltage. Here it's determined by the battery voltage, which is why you must connect the battery first. The recovery voltage, which is the voltage from the panel at which the controller will start to charge the battery. The cutoff voltage, which is the maximum voltage the battery should reach when it's fully charged. The cutoff current, the low voltage level for turning off the power to the load when the battery voltage gets too low, and the work mode, which sets the number of hours the load output is active. Some of the values on these screens can be changed while others cannot. After connecting the battery, you can connect the solar panel to the charge controller. If the panel is properly connected and in working condition, and it's in sunlight, the arrow on the display that goes from the panel icon to the battery icon will be animated, showing the solar panel is providing enough power to the battery to charge it. You should see the battery voltage increasing as the battery is charging. Now, connect the radio directly to the battery. Do not use the load connector on the front of the controller. The solar charge controller will charge the battery, topping it up as the radio draws the voltage down. By using the SC4830JUD charge controller and an appropriately sized solar panel or multiple panels connected in series or parallel as required, you can simultaneously use the radio and keep the battery fully charged. Alternatively, you could charge one battery using solar power while using a second battery to power your radio. With everything properly connected, you can scroll through the various pages on the display. Here you can see how much current is being used to charge the battery. In this case, you can see that the battery is being charged at a rate of 2.3 amps. After some time in the sun, the charge controller has fully charged the battery and the arrow icon going from the panel to the battery is no longer animated or black. This indicates that the controller is no longer supplying voltage to the battery. The ampere hour display screen shows the charge controller supplied two amp hours to charge the battery. I hope this video has demonstrated just how easy running your station by solar power can be. Obviously, I only covered a simple scenario with one radio, one battery, and one solar panel, but the process is the same even if you daisy chain multiple solar panels and multiple batteries. You just have to make sure that each of the components can handle the voltages and currents that you'll be subjecting them to. I hope you found this video useful. All the product links are in the video description. Subscribing to our YouTube channel really helps us out, so please subscribe and click the notification bell. Please also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Ham Radio Albert, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF, your Ham Radio Sensei. Arigato gozaimashita.